Good morning, folks. I wanted to wish you all a happy Easter. Easter is perhaps the greatest day of the entire year. Why? Well, in order to understand that, you need to understand what Easter is all about. Easter is about love. Easter is about sacrifice. Easter is about salvation and about a hero conquering the enemy of mankind. In order to understand Easter, you kind of need to understand Christmas. In order to understand Christmas, you need to understand a little bit about the history of things. Scripture records that God created the heavens and the earth and that he made mankind in his own image. This means we're somewhat God-like. We are not God, but we are made with many of his characteristics and in his image in a number of ways, actually. God loves us very much and he wanted us to be free. He wants our love as well, like a parent's want their children's love. We don't want to bind our children in our houses, force them to obey us and love us. We want them to love us freely. And God Almighty wants the same of mankind. He created us to have relationship with us. He wants us to be free and to freely worship him. And for this reason, when he set us loose on this earth, to be fruitful and multiply upon the face of the earth and to subdue it as he commands us. He gave us free will to choose whether or not we're going to return his love. He gave us only a couple commands. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Don't eat from a certain tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what does mankind do in the early pages of scripture is scamper over, start eating near the tree, under the tree, and then we ended up taking matters in our own hands to eat of the fruit that we were told not to. This was not just an understanding of good and evil. This was a supplanting of God's idea of good and evil with our own. Before, as a child obeys their parents and accepts whatever they say is true, Mankind accepted whatever God said was true and good. Once we ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we replaced God's idea of what's good with our own. This has been the problem with this earth since that time, since that moment. Since that time, mankind has supplanted God's idea of good and evil with our own. Ask anyone, take any five people. They all have a different idea of what they think is good and evil. When we use our own standard for good and evil, we get all of the atrocities that mankind has perpetrated on ourselves. We like to blame God for that too, saying all the suffering is in the world, it's all his fault. Actually, it's our fault. It's our fault. Sure, God's permissive will allow it because God was willing to allow a little pain and suffering into this world in order to give us the freedom that would show whether we actually love him. Because without freedom, you can't have true relationship. Think about that for a moment. So God loves us so much that he gave us the free will to sin against him. And we did. And every man, woman, child since has done the same. And this has caused all of the pain, suffering, disease, and decay in this world. God told them, when you eat of the free fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. And we did. That started our clock ticking, aging, disease, and eventually death for each and every person that walks the face of this earth. This actually was partly orchestrated by our adversary, the devil, who has been trying to upset things and steal the love that is desired, that is uh, intended for God for himself. He wants to destroy us and he wants to do it by first taking our worship and then destroying us. 
and he has been trying to upset God's plan from the beginning and to upset our happiness on this earth. And we are generally willing participants. But God created a plan to save us. Because we have sinned, we can't save ourselves. So God took it upon himself to save us. He chose to send his son to earth to be born of a virgin. This is what Christmas is all about, celebrating the fact that the God of the universe implanted his seed in one of us, a virgin, to have a son who is completely God and completely man, who could live a perfect sinless life to show us how it's done and eventually to pay the penalty of our sin for us. Christmas celebrates his coming. Easter celebrates his death, his murder, his burial, his resurrection. You think, why would we celebrate death? Well, because it is by death that Jesus conquered death. You see, Jesus Christ is not only completely man, bound with all of our frailties, he is also completely God, bound with all of the goodness and love of God Almighty. And after living a perfect, sinless life, he surrendered himself to us to be murdered on a cross in the most shameful way. He did this to conquer shame, to conquer death, to conquer sin. Because Jesus Christ is perfect and sinless and holy, his death is able to pay for everyone's sin. His blood is able to cover our sin. Mankind nailed him to a cross. The religious leaders were involved in this. The general people were involved with this. The Romans were involved with this. This means that religious leadership was involved in killing God Almighty. This means that the government of the times was involved in killing God Almighty. This means that the common man, that means you and me, were involved in killing God Almighty. Only a handful of people stood with him as he was murdered on that cross. And yet his love was enough to not seek revenge, retribution. There will be a reckoning. But first, there's love. And even overshadowing the reckoning is love. Jesus allowed himself to die. He could see beyond our own mistakes in participating in his crucifixion. He allowed them to kill him. He allowed us to kill him. His death was testified by the experts on death of the day. He laid there dead in the tomb for three days, which proved and proving that he was dead and gone. And yet, as his internal Godhead erupted into life, because you cannot kill permanently the author of life because he is life, this is what scripture teaches. He is the light and the life and the salvation for all mankind. Although we killed him, he conquered death, raised himself from the dead, appeared to many people, and then returned to heaven to prepare a place for all those who choose to worship him. This is good news. Easter is about love. Love because God Almighty became one of us. Love because God Almighty loved us enough to die for us, to surrender himself to death for us. Because God Almighty was clever enough to plan out a way to save us from our own rebellious hearts. This is a good day because Jesus conquered death. He conquered pain and suffering and sin. By Jesus conquering death, he offers life to each of us. Our sin means we will surely die and every man must die on this earth. But Jesus' death means that our, pain, our, our, our sin can be covered and paid for 
so that we appear before God Almighty after death with a clean slate. All of us are dirty, but if we stand washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, then our sin will be paid to his account and his goodness and his grace is sufficient to pay for all of us. Salvation, that's what his name means. So Easter is celebrating the fact that we killed God Almighty, but he loved us enough to conquer sin and pain and death and betrayal for us anyways. Jesus offers a free gift of salvation to all who will accept him. What do we need to do? Scripture says we need to surrender. Since we ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we have been supplanting God's opinion of good and evil with our own. And we need to give that up. Throw away your reason. Throw away your opinion about right and wrong. Grab a Bible and read from the pages of Scripture what God thinks about these things. And begin to reshape your mind to accept his opinion for good and right and wrong. Take his opinion over your own. And then do your best to follow that, to follow his opinion. Scripture teaches if we surrender to Jesus Christ, if we accept him as our Lord and Savior, if we accept his death, burial, and resurrection as payment for our sins, if we promise to worship him alone, to worship Jesus Christ as the God of the universe, to worship God through Jesus Christ, his son, through whom God has determined that all worship and praise and adoration must come. If you reject Jesus Christ, God will absolutely reject you as you probably don't want any friends who do not like your kids or accept them as parts of your family or as parts of your heir, as your heir, God Almighty will not accept you if you don't accept his heir, his son, the one who he sent to suffer for us. Surrender. Accept. Pray. Ask Jesus Christ to cleanse you of your sin with his blood, to come live inside of you. Jesus promised throughout the pages of scripture that if we surrender to him as, and accept him as our Lord and Savior, that he will send his Holy Spirit to live inside of us. The Holy Spirit is our guarantee that we will live forever with him after we die. It's like a wedding ring that doesn't come off. It is a covenant with God Almighty that even our own weakness cannot undo. That is a great gift. The Holy Spirit also will teach us truth as we study God's word, as we hear God's word. It will resound in our hearts and in our spirits that this is true. We'll just get this feeling that, hmm, this is right. How do we know that? It's God's spirit within us teaching our spirit and confirming the truth. This is what Easter is all about. It's about salvation. It's the culmination of God's plan. Do yourself a favor. Celebrate Easter. Surrender to God Almighty. Accept his death, burial, and resurrection. Surrender your hearts to his love and his Godhead and his care. Ask him to teach you. If you're uncertain about anything I'm saying, pray that God himself will reveal the truth of this message to your heart. If you pray that with an open heart, I believe God will reveal this truth to you. And then you will need to make a decision. If you resist that truth, our adversary will try and steal that truth away and you may never see it again. But if you surrender to that truth, God will fill you with your, his Holy Spirit and our adversary will never be able to stop you from seeing the truth as long as we continue to seek God Almighty through his word, through his spirit, and in his leading. Happy Easter. Have a great day.
enjoy.